Hello, my angels. So, I went to Beacon's Closet to get rid of some stuff that I had around the house that I didn't need anymore. Beacon's Closet is like, um, almost like a crossroads or a buffalo exchange where you could bring your old clothes. And then if they like them, usually they're high end. They should be like, they should be, but they say they don't, it doesn't have to be, it's the style, but that's not, that's a lie. They want name brand stuff. They want nice things in excellent condition, excellent to good condition that have really nice, um, what's that thing called? Hanger appeal. So that, and, and display appeal so that they can sell it. Right. And so when they buy it, let's say they say the item is 22 95 you get 30%, no, 60%, I think in credit and 30% in cash. So if it's, let's say $24, which is easy, $24, then you would get $16 in credit or $8 in cash. Now, if you get a certain amount, like a high amount and you want to buy something, like I bought this bag, which we're going to go over in a minute. Then what they do, like, for example, let's say my credit was a, a, a simple number, a hundred dollars. This bag was $45, I believe. Oh, I took the tag off. Darn it. Uh, 45 or $42, right? And let's say they were going to give me a hundred dollars in cash because I sold $300 worth of stuff. It's just, just theoretical numbers. Instead of them taking the $50 off the hundred dollars and only giving me 50, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, so that's $200 in credit. We're going to take the $45 off of this. So then it's 155 in credit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you half of that, which would be that 30% in cash. So 150, this is 75. So instead of it being the hundred dollars less the $42 or 45, which would be $55, I'm actually going to get $75 back because they, they took it from the credit first and then whatever was left, they gave me cash, you know, half of it in cash. So this bag was, let's say $45, I think it was 42 or $45. I ended up spending 28 if you do the equivalent of cash, you know, so I, I took the credit off first and then the cash. So instead of me spending 45, I spent 28. Does that make sense? Because I used the credit first and then I got cash, but instead of them taking $45 worth of cash, they really only took $28 worth of cash because of the conversion. Does that make Anyways, so I got this for, why did I buy this? Because I went online and I saw that they're selling for a hundred dollars on eBay. And I was like, if I don't want this, which I do, I wanted it specifically for my laptop. That's why I got it. And you all know, I love a Dooney and Burke. I love Dooney and Burke coach and Ralph Lauren. Like that's all I'm going to be buying right now. Um, because I don't want to give these luxury companies my money unless it's beauty and some accessories, but I'm not in love with most of the clothes that are coming out. I'm not in love with their jewelry and I'm not in love with the bags, the way that I used to love them. I'm, I'm a very classic, elegant person. That's my look. I prefer classic elegance. Unless I'm going to a rave or I'm going to some kind of festival, then I'll go crazy and be avant-garde or I'm going to like an art show. Then I'll be a little bit more artsy and a little bit more creative, but I'm generally a neutral kind of classic elegance. That's my look overall. As you can see from this, this is a briefcase from Dooney and Burke. And I was like, for $45, I have to get it. I have to get this. I can hold it like this. It has a crossbody strap. And the interesting thing about the Juni and Burke, because this is what I do with my, my Louis Vuitton bag, because I had a, a briefcase and the strap was missing. I had bought it like that and it was all beat up. I, I got it for $2 when I was like eight years old. And then I, I paid like $60 to fix it. And then I took my Dooney and Burke strap. My mom gave me hers and I, I, it matched perfectly with the patina. So the tan Dooney and Burke, the vintage ones, not this one, but the vintage ones tend to go very well with the Louis Vuitton patina. If it's like that nice caramel dark color, the Louis, the, the Dooney and Burke vintage straps look better with it. I feel like this particular briefcase might be a little bit more modern. Cause I could tell the difference between from the eighties, nineties, early two thousands to now the, the difference in the thickness of the leather and 
the the actual like strap it's different the strap isn't as thick as it was back then because that was full grain leather two pieces of full grain leather this leather nowadays is not as thick as it used to be so let's open it up I think you just squeeze it like that I don't think there's a key in here but it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna use it oh here's a receipt it was $44.95 yeah $45 and then they took it off my credit, so I didn't pay anything for it. And then I ended up getting the cash value that I was supposed to get less $28 instead of $45, if that makes any sense to you guys. And then you have this compartment, so I would put my laptop in the back, possibly with the nylon sleeve, because I like that extra cushion in case I did drop it or something. There's a pocket here that I would probably put my wallet in. That's what I normally do with the pockets is I'll put my wallet in there. Um, and then here I would just put anything loose, like my keys. Um, I usually put my wallet and my keys in the zipper compartment or one of the, oh, there's another one in here too. <clears throat> there's a zipper compartment here. So this divider is a zipper compartment. So you can put stuff in there too. And, and you see how like, you can see that it's full green leather. You see how thick this leather is? This is one piece of leather. One piece. Now a full green piece of leather is half as thick as this. It's crazy. And that's what I'm saying. This is luxury and it's cheaper than these three to $10,000 bags, but it's made better and it lasts longer and it looks better and it wears better. If you've ever had a Dooney and Burke all weather leather bag, Specifically like this look, this vintage Dooney and Burke look. I have bags that are 30 years old and I wear them all the time and they still look good. Some of them maybe look better than when I bought it. They age so gracefully. Then you have some bags, like I have a Chanel bag that I've had just as long, which I barely ever wore. And the corners on the bag already have like almost holes in them. Just from being on the shelf. Because it's calfskin leather. It might be goat skin. I think that one's goat skin. But still, so I don't care how much the bag is. I don't care about your prestige or your heritage anymore. I want quality. I want long lasting. I want something that looks good, feels good, that's going to, I could give to my children or my niece or my nephews or a friend one day. And, oh, and there's a back slip pocket too. So I'd probably put my keys back here and my wallet maybe and my cell phone if I want quick access to them because it's going to be against my body. People aren't even going to know that it's there. Um, cause I don't want to keep like opening this. Like I don't want to be walking and be like this and then I have to do this to get something. You know, I'm not, I'm not that girl. I love a bag with a back pocket. Oh my God. That is my thing. This little back pocket on any bag, put my phone in there. If it fits my keys, double whammy, put one credit card in there and I'm good to go. Happy as pie. So happy. So this was my find worst case scenario. If I decide one day I don't want it, I know I could sell it for a hundred plus dollars. So I've already made a profit if I want to get rid of it, but I'm not going to get rid of this because I love it. If you guys know this combination, the Navy blue, is this Navy blue? Yeah. The Navy blue and this Brown is my favorite. This and the cream and the Brown, like this tan and the cream. Almost all my bags are either tan and cream or Navy blue. Uh, sorry. Yeah. And navy blue or tan. Almost all of them. I think, well, I mean, I have other ones that are like suede and that was yellow and then gray, but yeah, majority of my bags are good that are Dooney and Burke are going to be tan, navy blue or cream. That's it. I don't really go into the greens or the reds. I have the Florentine bag in like that beautiful cognac kind of like reddish brown. Um, that I bought on QVC for $500 the first year it came out. And now it's like the it bag that everybody's talking about. And it's still $500. It doesn't have a price increase every few months. Do you see what I'm saying? I think we should really think about where we're spending our money. The, I feel like the prestige, and this is my personal opinion, alleged, not rooted in truth or facts, just my opinion. The prestige brands don't deserve the money that they're asking for, regardless of the heritage, because the, the customer service isn't there. When you walk in, they don't even treat you well. The, when you try to fix something, they 
barely ever repair it and then they want to charge you to repair it which it used to be just a courtesy or sometimes you had to pay for it but it was a decent price now it's like another thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars or two thousand dollars to fix something it's like come on now um seriously you should have made something that I never had to fix because it was made well in the first place and then the quality isn't there the craftsmanship isn't there the 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 type of leather it's just nothing is there a lot of people are complaining about the stitching too and some of them they're trying to still sell their like it the ones with the issues oh that's what it was hmm well that's another thing I'll talk about in another video uh, super Deka made a video about how Chanel had 30,000 bags stolen super Deka it's like Jacob but with a D and he said that there's a huge lawsuit that Chanel was suing a thrift store, like a third party seller, because they made $90 million selling Chanel stuff secondhand. And they didn't like that. And they were like, oh, they're selling counterfeit items. But they weren't counterfeit items. What happened was that they had 30,000 bags stolen. And because they were stolen, they were marked as counterfeit because they didn't sell it. So it's real Chanel bags made by Chanel with Chanel quality and Chanel stuff. But because they didn't make a profit off of it, and because it was stolen, they marked it as counterfeit. Now, these third-party sellers are just buying them. They don't know that this was stolen. Chanel didn't make it known to everyone that, hey, we lost 30,000 bags, right? Because who wants to put that out there? But they did because they were like, oh, well, it looks like some of these bags that you sold were from that lot, and therefore they're counterfeit, and so we don't want you selling our stuff anymore. And we're suing you. But then the CEO had the audacity to one, make a mistake about the product. He's like, we never made it with these zippers, which they did. It's just that he didn't know because most of the executives in most places, not all of them, alleged, just saying, we're not rude in truth or fact, just how I feel, <clears throat> don't really know everything about their product. They just know how to run a business. Not all of them. Some people are really, you know, really great CEOs and stuff like that. And, um... And then they said that, oh, it can't be Chanel because the stitching's off and it's crooked. And it's like, well, if you go on YouTube, you'll see thousands of videos of people saying, I'm in Chanel and look at this bag. It's stitched. Hold on. You can't even close it because it's not stitched properly. It looks like this, so it's not lined up. You can't close it properly because of the way that it was stitched incorrectly. The stitching's off. It's not even sitting straight. It's like this, this thing is bent or tilted. Like so many quality issues. And the sales reps have the audacity to say something like, well, that's what makes it so unique. It's handmade. But then when you go to court, they use that same sales tactic to say it's inauthentic because it has all the problems that it had in the store, which is why the person probably sold it in the first place. At the secondhand place. I mean, his video was so much better than I'm explaining it right now, but this is like the synopsis of it. And I loved every second of it. I was like, you go super Jacob. I love him. He just mm, love him. And so I don't ever have to worry about that with a Dune Burke because they actually have a quality control department that does their job and make sure that you don't get a lot of defective things. And even if it's defective, they at least are nice enough to sell it on I love Dooney or, you know, to say like, okay, we're going to sell it cheaper, like half price, um, you know, and say like, Hey, there's a problem with it, which is what you're supposed to do if you have a problem with you, but nope, not Chanel. So I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be an influencer and everyone's like, Oh, don't you want to promote all these brands? I did. But the more I promote them, the more I see how they're treating people, the more I see how everything is declining and the prices are going up and then how they're, they're putting their noses up to like anybody who, you know what I mean? Like they, these people that are aspiring that buy your, they built your company with, it's not the 2% that's building your company. It's everyone else. Do you know what I mean? And I just don't like the way that they're treating people. So I'm not sure that I want to continue promoting certain brands. I love Dior. I haven't heard anything about Dior. I haven't personally. I've looked up videos. I haven't heard much. 
I love Dior. I'll always love Dior. <laughs> Y'all know that. I like Ralph Lauren. He's had some issues over the years, but nothing too crazy. Um, well, recently. Um, I love, but I still love him. Nobody cuts a dress like Ralph Lauren. It fits. I'm a plus size woman and everything that I buy from Ralph Lauren fits me well. I don't have to get it tailored. They did it for me. I love Ralph Lauren. I love Ralph Lauren. I love him. I love him. I love him. I'm trying to get a Ricky bag right now. I think it's like three to $6,000 and that's what I'm saving for. I want to get the suede, not the suede one, the tan. It's like a grayish tan. It kind of looks like the trench from Hermes, which you know, all my Hermes, all of my Hermes bags are in trench. I only like the color trench. That's my favorite color. That's all I really want. I don't want any, I don't want a bag. If I go to Hermes and they're like, what do you want? I said, contact me when you have something in the color trench. I only want the color trench. So the bag that the Ricky that they have is very similar to trench, which is a very neutral tan, almost like it's lighter than this. It's like this, it's almost like this color. So it goes with everything because it looks like a warm tone or a cool tone because it's so like this, it's like this, this is almost exactly what trench is like. So it goes well with warm tones, but it also goes well with cool tones. You could wear the one bag every single day and never have to switch out a bag because it looks good with everything. It's my favorite color from Hermes. So the Ricky bag that I'm looking for looks like that. If you have a lot of money and you love my channel and you wanted to thank me, you could buy me that Ricky bag. I think it's like $25 or $3,500. I'll take it. My address is in the description box below. Um, if not, you could just buy me a cup of coffee. I'll take that too. Um, I did write a book. If you want to support the channel, you can buy my book. It's called Broken the City. It's on Amazon. Uh, I also have an ebook. Um, and it's living a 200K lifestyle on a 40K budget. I'm coming out with a Bible planner next. Get excited. Um, and then I'll be coming out with different planners after that. Um, just because I like, I'm creative, I'm quirky, I have a lot of ideas. I like to poke the bear. <laughs> and, um, and you'll see, like, so I'm in a philosophical one. I have all kinds of different planners that are just like creative and art, but still functional. You know what I mean? Like, around you'll see subscribe hit the button you know anyways if you like my vibe please subscribe if you like my style come back for a while if you want to buy me a cup of coffee i'll take it uh until next time my beautiful amazing cutie patooties with the little booties i'll catch you later bye